ask almost any Republican, and they'll tell you that Olympic hammer thrower Gwen Berry recently did something very, very bad. During the Olympic track and field trials, Berry turned away from the American flag while the national anthem was playing. She also put a black t-shirt over her head, her head that read, activist athlete. It wasn't a knee, but the response was the same. We don't need any more activist athletes. I, I, you know, she should be removed from the team. The entire point of the Olympic team is to represent the United States of America. Barry says she has no issues representing America, obviously, because she spent years working and practicing so she could compete representing America at the Olympic Games. She says her issue is with a song like that, uh, the national anthem in this case, is so like so many things in this country, it has racist roots. If you know your history, you know the full song of the national anthem. The third paragraph speaks to slaves in America, our blood being slain and, and piltered all over the floor. It's disrespectful. Barry is referring to this stanza that I bet you never heard before. It reads in part, no refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. The interpretation of that stanza, stanza is up for debate, but I can see why most of us only learn the first verse in elementary school. They really don't make us sing that part of the national anthem, I guess, for good reason. And joining me now is sports journalist Carrie Champ Champion. She's the co-host of Carrie and Jamel Won't Stick to Sports on Vice TV, which I love. And she's also the host of the podcast Naked. Carrie, Gwen Berry has been here before. Back in 2019, the Olympic Committee, they fined her and put her on probation for a year for raising her fist at the podium at the Pan American Games. And, and this time, it just feels like such a coordinated attack on her from the right how did, what's your reaction to how this is all unfolding since, you know, this weird moment where they play the anthem, you know, coincidentally, when she happens to be on the podium, she makes a decision to turn her back? Yeah. Well, first off, thanks for having me. And uh, I would like to say that I love that you're doing this story and stories like this, because here is the reality. If they think that Gwen is the only athlete who will raise her fist, who will turn their back uh, when the national anthem is played, the Star State Spangled Banner is played, they're, they're wrong. Um, this is not a new thing. I liken it to Colin Kaepernick, but this time she won't lose her job. She won't lose the ability to compete. She might lose some fans. She might lose some favor, but this is her choice. And we live in a world where we have choices, believe it or not. And athletes now have decided that the intersection of sports and politics is one that is prevalent and it is necessary to address, if not imperative. They have this platform not just to entertain and distract, but they have this platform to speak out if they choose to. Um, I find it interesting that when an athlete is saying something against the right side, if that right side is their side, then we need them to be quiet. But the other ones are heroes. The other athletes who speak to what need to be spoken to correctly in someone else's opinion, they are amplified and considered a real American hero. And I applaud her I applaud her bravery. She says she thought this was a setup. She said she was told that that would not that song would not be played. And it was conveniently played. She had in her opinion no choice. Can we fault her for that? No. I mean sitting here today I'm on I got to be honest with you. I mean, I think the bigger question is like why would I be on the Olympic podium <laughs> at the Olympic trials? Uh you know that that there would be probably be a lot of circumstances that would have to unfold for that moment to happen in my own life. But if given an opportunity to make a statement about this issue during the national anthem in that moment, I'm taking it. I'm taking that moment because you you may not get it again, right? And you know, the iconic photo of Tommy Smith and John Carlos you know, we've seen that photo for a generation, um, and it, it's, it's such an iconic photo. And everybody should know that the white man on that photo agreed with their protest and felt it was sure. most appropriate not to also raise his, his fist uh, as well. That's just a fun nugget. But this year, the Olympic Committee is actually barring any form of political expression. How tenable yeah. is that position in the era that you're talking about, which is what we're living in right now? 
It's not feasible. I, I like the idea of them saying that there is no political expression, but sometimes it's personal. Political becomes personal. Mm. Uh, she was very clear. Gwen said, I am doing this for my people. I am doing this for those who have been disproportionately murdered in America. I didn't say I don't love my country, but this is what I stand for. This is what I believe in. And it's hard to tell someone that they can't stand and and actually promote what they believe in. This is a personal choice of hers. And if they think this, she's the first, this is, you're sadly mistaken. I always, I ask this question, um, especially when it initially started back in 2016 with Colin Kaepernick. I said, if he was kneeling for breast cancer, would we really stop down and say, oh my goodness, this is, this is ridiculous. You can't, you cannot have a job in the NFL. If he was kneeling for something that was deemed appropriate and then therefore not Black Lives Matter, not that you're killing black men at disproportionate rates, if he was doing something that was accepted by all, then there wouldn't be a problem. And that in itself is a problem. If she decided to, Gwen being she, decided to put on a, a pink, say if it was pink t-shirt that said breast cancer matters, we would love her. And by we, I mean, everyone would be singing her praises. There would not be as much backlash. She would not have to delete her Twitter account. That's unfortunate. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.